Whenever she stumbles across the slightest chance of busting her brothers, Candace immediately loses it and screws up big time, which often results in her looking like the bad guy whether she likes it or not. So here are the 5 worst things Candace Flynn ever did in her life, not including the stuff she did completely unintentionally cause, you know, accidents can happen. Number 5. Almost putting busting ahead of her brother. In traffic camp caper, Candace is at a crossroads, deciding whether to save Phineas or a disc, containing the evidence of everything her brothers have done over the summer from falling off a bridge. Now, she ends up doing the right thing, saving her brother, and we all give her credit for this one little good deed. She saved him, she does care, what a nice person. She what? She had to think about it for like 20 seconds, how is that a good thing? I get that she'd be tempted to show her mom the disc, but if she let her brother fall into the river, what would she even be busting then? His corpse? Since we're talking about an animated show, if Phineas had fallen from up there, he probably would have been fine, they would all have had a big laugh afterwards, singing a song about it perhaps, still this doesn't justify Candace's hesitation. Also, how did she expect her mom to react if she happened to save the disc instead? Mom, here's the evidence, look! Oh my goodness, Candace, you were right! He's in big trouble, where is he? Oh, right, he... he's with God now, mom. He's with God now. And at the end, Candace even admits one of the reasons why she saved Phineas instead of the disc was because she still had the big rocket the boys built for evidence. You may be a pain, but you are my brother. They didn't portray her as a good person back in season 1. Number 4. Treating Stacy like a doormat I've got the key and he's just a doormat She's treated her that way so many times over the course of the summer, but the most memorable instance is when in the lemonade stand, Candace had to pick between her friendship with Stacy and the totally unlikely chance of busting her brothers. Of course, she decided to stop being friends with Stacy at once. I guess you're not my best friend. Not anymore. Fine. 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 Finally, the plumber! Stacy has always been the best of friends to Candace, joining her in her busting crusades, helping her out with Jeremy and much more, yet Candace never realized how good of a friend Stacy was. They're using protractors! Throwing away a lifelong friendship just to keep an eye on her brothers seemed to be a great choice at first, but after giving it a second thought, Candace realized she could have played her cards a little better with Stacy. But instead of thinking about what she did and trying to understand Stacy's point of view because maybe she exaggerated treating her that way, no, Candace prefers to simply get a new best friend. The moment Candace realizes she only has four friends, one of them being her mom, she starts regretting her decision and wants to get Stacy back. By the end of the episode, Candace faces the same choice once again and is torn between Stacy and batting her brothers. Luckily, this time friendship won over busting, again requiring Candace at least half a minute to think it through. That doesn't really make up for the way she treats poor Stacy, but that's a start. Candace, we're about to go on. Where are you? Candace? Candace, are you there? <laughs> Wrong number. Number 3. Helping aliens enslave humanity. After she got abducted by aliens and became friends with their leader, Super Super Big Doctor, Candace found out that the aliens were in fact evil and that they also imprisoned Phineas, Ferb and the gang because of her. Super Super Big Doctor revealed that she needed Candace as she exhaled carbon dioxide, an element that allowed Super Super Big Doctor's plant, Mama, to produce mind-controlling spores, which is how she got to rule over the planet and its native population in the first place. But now that Mama's running out of CO2, the aliens need a Candace more than ever to carry on with their plan. With that crucial knowledge at her disposal, Candace decided to keep quiet. Of course she didn't. She soon explained how everybody on Earth exhales CO2, and since she really wanted the aliens to understand it, she said it twice. You know, just in case. The first time, Super Super Big Doctor didn't really pay too much attention to what Candace said, so for some unknown reason, Candace felt the need to repeat herself just to make sure the aliens would understand how convenient it would be to enslave the entire humankind. Big brain move. Well, on Earth, everybody exhales carbon dioxide, genius. Hada, 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 hada. What? Yeah, all seven billion of us. So Candace basically encouraged Super Super Big Doctor to go conquer Earth as well. And of course, all of this happened right after Candace told her brothers how they're the bane of her existence and sending them to an alien jail. She didn't mean to send them there, but come on. In what language does the sentence to take care of someone have a good and peaceful meaning? I said I'll take care of them and you were like, would you? You're the best. 
house, so I thought you were down with the whole dungeon thing. Number 2. Endangering the entire universe On the last day of summer, after her busting schemes failed miserably once again, Candace ends up at Vanessa's and activates Doofenshmirtz's Dooverinator, a machine that does the day over again. First of all, she sees a mysterious machine that can apparently reset the day, and the first thing she does is to push a random button on it. She got lucky she didn't push one of the many self-destruct buttons the machine had. At least, I assume it had more than one. You can be too careful when it comes to blowing yourself up. So the day starts all over again, giving Candace one more chance to bust her brothers. Now, notice how on the first loop, Candace literally points out how risky this is, saying, if it keeps repeating, I should do something about it. I don't know the repercussions if I just let it run. If you told me there'd be consequences, I wouldn't doubt it. So she had no doubt her actions had some pretty serious consequences, yet she prefers to focus on busting her brothers instead. I mean, I love her optimism, but bruh. Because of the innator malfunctioning though, the day keeps on repeating over and over again. And I guess Candace forgot about the if it keeps repeating I should do something about it part, cause she said nothing until things went completely downhill. Stuff disappeared, making people forget about its existence, as the looping was slowly tearing apart the fabric of space-time. So at that point, she decided to ask Phineas and Ferb for help. And as if disrupting the entire universe wasn't enough, Candace didn't want to admit it was her who caused all of this mess in the first place, even though her confession is literally the only thing that could save the universe in that very moment. But you know that old saying, never question the source of a temporal time space loop thingy. <laughs> really? Yeah, I've heard that. She ends up revealing the truth, and since she's the one who saved the day at the very end, all oh, is forgiven. forgiven, no matter who doomed us all in the first place. Also, if I were her, I would have asked Doofenshmirtz for some help, like that's the first thing I would have done, but I'm not judging or questioning her poor planning skills, you do you. And at number 1, Dooming the entire tri-state area. Somehow we always end up talking about this episode, huh? This time the blame falls on future Candace, who, in her infinite wisdom, decides to time travel 20 years into the past just to bust Phineas and Ferb. By doing so, she altered the future and ruined hundreds of lives as Dr. Doofenshmirtz became the Tri-State Area's Emperor and ruled it with an iron fist. Ah, Emperor Doofenshmirtz! Ah, get back to work! Being an adult woman, Candace sure knew the consequences of time traveling, but of course she couldn't care less and she doomed everybody. This is why I'll make sure to tell my future children about the consequences of time traveling. On their wedding days, perhaps. Once everything got fixed, just to add insult to injury, future Candace, or better, the alternate version of her, had the audacity to lecture Phineas and Ferb about time traveling when it's thanks to them that she could go back to her time. Guys, we've seen how time travel can mess things up big time, so promise me you won't go into the future again. What? You were the one who messed things up in the first place. The boys safely traveled to the future, causing no harm or consequences whatsoever, while you managed to condemn the entire town to dress up like pharmacists and be ruled by an oppressive emperor too. Sure, everything got fixed, but because of her, everybody who lived in the timeline she created by altering the past, well, they lived 20 years oppressed by an evil tyrant in a dystopia only to be erased from existence the moment the timeline got deleted. It's quite dark when you see it that way, which is why this is number one on my list. But don't you worry about that, if you've gotta be ruled by someone, Doof is probably the better option. Okay, you can keep the 401k, but the daycare you're gonna have to pay for out of your own pockets. I've, I've made enough concessions here. She acted impulsively, selfishly, once again, even if she was an adult woman. And it really caused me to say this, as you know how much I tend to justify her actions and blame her at times bad attitude on the circumstances, but this time she screwed up so bad. And I'm surprised at how the only times she gets away with it are the times she messes up the most. Her karma always gets the best of her when she deserves it and even when she doesn't, but everything worked out just fine in this situation. She got in trouble and Candace gets busted when virtually she didn't mean to do anything wrong, while here she gets away with it. I've said it before and I'll say it again, karma simply doesn't work. So there you have it, I think I've criticized her enough for today and to think she's my favorite character, but even the best of us grew up at times, so yeah, all is forgiven. Let me know if you agree with these picks or if there's some even more horrible things Candace did that I didn't mention. Also, if you're not as bad a person as Candace, then you should hit the potato button and I'll see you guys next time. Ciao!